What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to The Haunted Beard. My name is Jake. Well, here we are. I am wrapping up my Scream series with an official ranking. I want to rank all five movies. Now, obviously, this is just my opinion. This is my list. Your list will be different. Let me know down in the comments how you rank the series. I'd be interested in hearing from you. Also, if you like videos and content like this, that is what I do on The Haunted Beard. It is all horror and thriller-related content. Click that red subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. Now let's get into the list. So my main criteria for ranking these is, I just asked myself the question, which of these would I most want to watch first? If I had to put one in right now, which one it would, would it be? Starting at number one to my favorite, all the way down to this is the last one that I would put in and watch. So that's really my criteria. Also, I'm not going to go super in-depth with this. If you want more in-depth thoughts, you can watch my individual reviews for all five of these. So, coming in at number five, and this actually was the toughest spot, deciding between number five and number four. But number five for me is Scream 3. Now, I'll start off by saying that I don't dislike any of these movies, including Scream 3, even though it is my least favorite. It's the one where I can put in and it it's fine. It's okay. I can put it in and, and have a, a decent enough time with it. I think this is, for me, the least scary and least suspenseful out of the entire series so far. I think this movie is really sorely lacking the presence of Randy. It's really noticeable, his sort of absence from this. Obviously, there is that kind of cameo scene, but it's just not the same. This one just feels like it's missing out on some of the intensity and kind of the brutality and the bloodiness of some of the others. And it, it, it just is kind of the, the lightest and just the least memorable. There's not a whole lot really here that's just super memorable. I will say, though, I think the third act is probably the best part of the whole movie. I do enjoy the whole sequence with the reveal of who Ghostface is, and then you really get to see Sidney Prescott in action. And there's there's some fun to be had in the third act with her fighting Ghostface and all that stuff. So that that's probably the highlight of it. But overall, it's, it's a decent enough watch. And so Scream 3 comes in at number five. Coming in at number four is Scream 2022. And this one and Scream 3 were pretty close. What edged this one out over Scream 3 and I will say, too, that I probably actually have sort of more issues or am a little bit more critical of this one than Scream 3. But what edged this one out was just kind of more of the tone and the vibe of this. It's just a little darker, a, a little more sinister. It has a little bit more suspense to it. The, the kills are a little more bloody and more gruesome. And so I just kind of sync better with the overall vibe of this one versus Scream 3. I like some of the new characters. I like Jenna Ortega. She stands out for me. I like the character of Mindy as they kind of reintroduce sort of a new Randing character, and I'm excited to see what they do with her coming up in Scream 6. I think this film executes the suspense and kill sequences a little bit better than Scream 3, and I like the, the final kill when, spoiler alert, Sam kills... Richie is just a brutal and gnarly kill that I really enjoy. So that is number four, Scream 2022. Next up is number three, and I will say if I was sort of making this into a tier list, this would go on the next tier above. There's a little bit of a gap between number three and number four. So number three for me is Scream 2. I think overall this is a pretty solid sequel. I like the opening sequence. I like the added meta aspect of having the stab films introduced obviously the presence of randy he's one of my favorite characters in this entire franchise so i love having him there the the film theory class is a scene that sticks out to me where he's breaking down all the rules of the sequels really solid one of the ghost face attacks where sydney is at her theater production i just really like sort of the over-the-top theatrical vibe of that whole sequence and just the editing and everything is a really solid sequence there i feel like the characters in scream 2 were a little bit lacking as well as the humor just didn't quite land and wasn't there as much for me but there is still some really solid stuff here i will say though that scream 2 i think has one of the best executed sequences just in terms of suspense and tension 
out of the entire franchise where Sydney and her friend are in the back of the car and Ghostface is in the front seat knocked out and they have to climb out of the car over Ghostface. I think that's a great scene, one of the best scenes in the whole movie. I really like the ending and the Ghostface reveal. Uh, solid sequence there. So that is number three for me, Scream 2. Next up at number two is Scream 2. Four. And I talked in my review on this one that this movie has just kind of some sentimental value to me. It holds a special place in my heart as it was filmed in my old hometown. I think the opening sequence in Scream 4 is pretty great. I love just the super meta aspect of it that we're now watching the opening sequences to the stab films. That all works really well for me. I love just how brutal and, and gnarly this one is. Just the kills here are probably the most brutal out of all five of these. I like the new characters here, especially the character of Kirby. I'm excited that she's coming back. I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with her character. I like the characters of Charlie and Robbie as the film geeks because I can relate to them. It's why I love the character of Randy, obviously, but I like Charlie and Robbie here. I like the scene, especially between Kirby and Charlie. I think it's a really solid scene when he's sitting outside and in the chair strapped down and she's on the phone talking to the killer. I really like the whole ending sequence where Jill's character is revealed to be one of the Ghostface killers. I think Emma Roberts is really solid here and just really sells that performance and I, I just dig the whole ending sequence there. I like some of the nods that kind of goes back to the original. So overall I think Scream 4 is just a really solid Scream film and it is my number two. And that takes me to my number one which could it be anything else? It is the original Scream from 1996. And as I've already mentioned, this is one of my favorite movies, one of the best horror films that I have ever seen. This thing is a, a genuine, absolute classic. The opening sequence is just phenomenal and just about as perfect as perfect can be. This movie as I said in my review, is this perfect marriage of horror and comedy where it keeps horror first but also brings along the comedic element that really just complements it, but it doesn't take away from the horror and it, and it doesn't just completely ruin the tone. It doesn't feel cheesy and goofy. It doesn't destroy the horror element of it. It's still scary. It's still suspenseful. It's just that perfect marriage of horror and comedy the, the comedy here is phenomenal. Matthew Lillard is absolutely hilarious to me. I think he's just great as Stu. <laughs> the, the characters are all just really solid. The uh, character of Randy, of course, is great. The whole meta aspect, I'm all here for. This is a... This is a horror film for horror film fans. I'm a horror film fan, so I absolutely love Scream. Like I said, if you want more in-depth thoughts. I've got reviews for all of these, so check out my reviews for all five of these movies. So those are my thoughts. That is my official ranking for the Scream series, but hit me up down in the comments. Let me know what your ranking is. This is obviously just mine. Yours is probably going to be different, so let me know what yours is. I would love to hear from you. That is all I've got for you right now. I don't know what I'm going to be bringing next, but I will be bringing something. So Stay tuned for whatever I decide to bring next. I don't know if it'll be just some individual reviews or maybe another series of reviews, but whatever it'll be, it'll be good. At least I hope it will. And uh, we will see you next time on A Haunted Beard.